You know what? It's 2024, and we are still having technical issues. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm a millennial. I should understand, like, I should understand technology better, or maybe I, maybe it's just technology is being a pain in the in the butt. But this is like three days in a row having some major technical technical difficulties, and I can't guarantee that they won't happen in this show. So we're just going to see what happens, but I know you guys are tired of waiting. So thank you very much for joining uh, on the Southside Beat. It is a football Friday. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. Really appreciate it. Uh, flying solo today. Corey is, uh, if he's not already there, he's en route to uh, Indianapolis for Paul Skeens' uh, uh, second AAA start. Um, and uh, yeah. And that's pretty exciting if you're a Pirates fan. Obviously, it's also the home opener today, um, which is why I, I'm not going to speak for DK. I don't think, um, if I had to guess, there would be no uh, no uh, Ramon show today just because I think DK is at the ballpark today. Uh, maybe he's doing it. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but, yeah, so happy. Oh, Jesus, dude. I swear to God, man, I am all over the place. I'm knocking everything over and yeah, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Happy Friday, everybody. <laughs> James, James uh, saying here, um, he said Monday. Okay, cool. All right. So we, we know that now. Uh, so I, I've, I'm all you got today. And uh, with the way everything is going, that's not such a good thing. <laughs> all right. So uh, no, let, let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, yeah, Richard, thank God it's Friday for real. T G I F. Um, <laughs> spice creation says, I thought you pulled a Corey. No, I, I did not. I did not pull a Corey. I just, you know, having like for whatever reason, like, so I've got, you know, I've got like, a, you know, a work computer and then I've got my own personal computer, but the personal computer is, a, is like more than a decade old. And so I'm actually using that right now because for whatever reason, my work computer, my camera doesn't always isn't doesn't always work with the work computer. I don't know why. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Like one time I was about ready to go and all of a sudden I saw the camera like like the screen was just like flickering like nonstop and I'm like okay I'm not going to do a show in which like my face is flickering for 30 minutes people aren't going to want to tune in. Not that I'm some sort of like pretty thing to look at anyway, but still nobody wants to see somebody else's face just flickering for 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it, it just trying to figure out the right formula here and yeah. Um, oh yeah. And so also important to note here, uh, Randy brings us up next Ramon Foster show is eclipse day, Monday, April four or, uh, Monday, April 8th. And, uh, yeah, I, and, and like the town that I live in is in like the, 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 the path of totality. So Yeah we might be a little late for the South side beat on Monday too, because my kids are like, my kids are staying home from school. Like I'm not like, Oh, I'm still keeping them home. Like no school districts are closed here for this. Uh, and, and I don't think it's just because it's a natural phenomenon. I, I think it's mostly because um, like the County that I live in is expecting like an additional 200,000 people to show up. So like, Traffic is going to be a nightmare just to put just to. Yeah, especially because the town that I live in is already over overpopulated enough. And then the county itself is expecting an additional 200,000 people. Yeah, this is going to be Monday is going to be a pain in the butt. This weekend is going to be a pain in the butt because now, you know, over the weekend, everybody's going to be traveling to this area because the entire DFW area, and especially if you live a little east of it, is all in the path of totality for the eclipse. So, yeah. Um. All right, actual football. We were over four minutes into the show. We haven't even discussed football yet. That's that's a that's a sin on my part. Um, so I'll lead off today with you know I was I was kind of going uh, going I was kind of going through a, a couple of different topics that I could really kind of focus on today, or at least lead off with, and I kept going back to more of a bigger picture sense because we've been talking so much about the draft and. Uh, talking, you know, a lot about, you know, it, you know, center versus tackle and how to cornerback and receiver play into all this defensive line. That's, you know, uh, you know, obviously, you know, come up in, in conversation with you guys. And um, 
one big thing that I keep thinking about is the is the 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 larger scope of all this, the larger scope of what the Steelers are doing, going all the way back to January when Art Rooney the second was sitting in that room with select reporters, including DK, and he's talking about this urgency that the that the that the franchise has right now, how you know they're tired of losing, and so you know. When the owner says that, you know, even if it's something that Mike Tomlin already knows and Omar Khan already knows and Andy Weidel already knows, you know, when he says that publicly, that 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 puts a little bit. It's one thing to say something behind closed doors and, you know, only have maybe a few people in the public know about it or maybe nobody in the public know about it. It's another thing when the owner sits there on the record and says something that now everybody who has access to the Internet can consume. It's different. It puts it puts uh, it puts pressure. You know, people talk about well, should Mike Tomlin's seat be warm? Like I think just statements like that create urgency, create pressure. And you know, we've seen. To me, the thing that really stands out is is the overhaul of the quarterback room. That 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 embodies that embodies the um, the urgency. That, that I think I'm talking about, you know, the, the, this is a franchise that doesn't just throw away first round picks and they traded away. Now, I, like, I understand that they didn't want to trade Kenny Pickett. It's not that they went into this situation and we're like, okay, we're going to sign Russell Wilson. And then we are planning to then turn around and trade Kenny. Um, however, just because Kenny requests something doesn't mean that you have to acquiesce. It, you could just be like, you know what? Tough crap. You're under contract with us for two more years. You know, how about you figure it out? How about you try to embrace the, the competition here instead of just, you know, saying you want to go somewhere else. And um, the fact that they were just, you know, what Kenny says, yeah, and William says here, you know, like, I, I get it. Like, we don't want hostages, you know, that, 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 uh, you know, Tomlinism that, 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 you know, we, we've heard Mike say quite a bit where he says, you know, we want volunteers, not hostages. And, you know, I, I get that. I understand that. And, and, and they'll, but I don't think that that necessarily, let's not pretend that everybody in the locker room is held to the same standard. Right. Because, if Antonio Brown goes on Facebook live after a playoff, win, he gets a slap on the wrist, if wide receiver five on the depth chart goes Facebook live, do you think that the punishment is the same? No, it's not. Certain players can get away with certain things. And when you're a first round quarterback, that's got two years left on the contract, plus a potential fifth year option. That's not something you just throw away. That, that they that's a player that's usually held, you know, put on a even if it's a little bit of a like just a little bit higher, it's a little bit of a higher pedestal. It just is. You don't just throw away first round picks, and this, and the Steelers are willing to do that. You know, and then you know, obviously because Omar Khan did his due diligence, he knew that okay, we're trading Kenny now. What what's our fallback here? And you know, thankfully because of previous conversations with Ryan Poles and the Bears that they had they had an opportunity to to acquire Justin Fields and so they they moved on but and James and James here says you know I feel like they were baiting Kenny they knew he would react the way he did I don't think they did I I think you know if, if they l- listen and, and William kind of brings up a, a a a good point here Kenny was headed to a Mason career in my mind like like listen if they tell Kenny Russell's going to get the first team reps in training camp, he could go about that one of two ways. And, and obviously one way was to, to request a, to request a, you know, a, a trade or, or, you know, to ask to be sent somewhere else, but he could also just be like, all right, doesn't matter. I'm winning the job. I know where Russell Wilson is in his career. I know what he's capable of. I know what he's done but I also know that he's not the same guy that he was five years ago. And I have confidence in myself that I'm going to get better 
and that this offense is going to fit my skill set better. Uh, I don't want to speak for Kenny. You know, I, I, that, that's honestly completely out of line and out of place. Out of my, you know, it just is. But for me, if it were me, I would take that as the ultimate challenge. That's how I would take it. And uh, I, I think that there were those in, in in the, I think there were those in the Steelers front office that wanted Kenny to kind of do that. And obviously that didn't happen. And so they moved on. But regardless of how that situation went down, this franchise has been creating more and more urgency in the past couple of off seasons. They were pretty aggressive last off season, but it's, it's ramped up a bit more, you know, they, they had, you know, similar cap space. If anything, they, they actually entered free agency last year with less cap space than they did this year in terms of the actual cap space. Like by the time the league, the league year starts, the Steelers had more cap space this year than they had last year. Um, and they went on, you know, but they also had way more freedom last year. Uh, the ability to create more cap space and, you know, they, they did a good amount of stuff. They got Isaac Sayamalo, you know, they, they uh, revamped the inside linebacker room, but this year it's been Patrick queen. It's been Deshaun Elliott. It's been finding ways to plug holes with, with it just, it, it has felt more like, like a, it's not an all in move. Like these haven't been all in moves. Cause if, if so, you'd be seeing like draft picks be traded away at, like I'm talking about like draft, like higher draft picks. You, you'd be seeing more of a, like they're pushing their chips all, you know, all their chips into the middle of the table. And I haven't sensed that, but I've definitely sensed more urgency. And so what does that mean? Like, what does that mean for 2024? Like, wh what is the expectation? Now, we know that if anybody is asked about that, if Mike Tomlin's asked about that, Omar Khan's asked about that, their their goal is going to say it's to win a Super Bowl. But what realistically has to happen in order for next year to be, like, legitimately a success? Like, to be able to walk away, and obviously, like, a Super Bowl win, that's, like, the ultimate success, but... If they get to a conference championship and lose, is it still a successful year? Is it still, you know, something that, you know, by the by the time the season comes to an end, you're like, you know what? I felt a lot. I feel really good about that Steelers season. Um, You know, Joseph here says, you know, we want playoff wins. But is that like, does one win suffice? Because I, I would bet pretty strongly the Steelers aren't going to get the first round by in the AFC. That they're not going to finish the 2024 season with the best record in the conference. So one playoff win would just be winning in the wild card round and then losing in the divisional round. Is that good enough? Like, like, like what's what would what would have to happen in order for that urgency to properly be met? Um, Demond coming in with a, with a contribution, 999 uh, here. I'll get to this and I'll, I'll definitely come back to you uh, in a second. Cause obviously you contribute. I, I want to, you know, uh, get to that. Uh, just finish this point real quick and, and I'll get back. Um, Cause we will talk some draft stuff. We're going to be talking draft stuff every, every single day. Um, and William says, you know, Super Bowl or bust, you know, Jordan here says, you know, a win or two in the playoffs. Um, B Phil says, you know, a little bit more big picture. I want to know if Fields is the guy. Yeah, you know, th there are certain things that I think have to play out, but you know, and I, yeah, it just, I think, there, I think there's, you know, there's not a, there's not a general consensus, you know, obviously the, 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 the cop out answer is, well, they got to win the Super Bowl. Well, well, yeah, that's the ultimate goal. You can't win the Super Bowl and be like, yeah, that was kind of a down year. No, come on. <laughs> um, but you know, if what if they go ten and seven again, but they win in the wild card round this year? You know, what if they go twelve and five and don't win a playoff game? You know, what if they go nine and eight? sneak in as a seventh seed, but 
win two up two playoff games. You know, you see what I'm saying? Like, like there's a number of different ways that this can be measured because you can look at regular season record, but I obviously know that, you know, fans are, I mean, it's been since the 2016 season that the Steelers have won a, won a playoff game. So I would assume that any, that bare minimum, any urgency has only begun to be met if the Steelers win a playoff game. If they make it to the playoffs, regardless of record, they're nine and eight, 10 and seven, 11 and six, 12 and five, 13 and four, whatever the record is. But if they win that playoff game, they, they snap that streak just to be like, all right, got the monkey off our back. And then they somehow meet Patrick Mahomes in the next round and well, crap, we can't compete with him. You know, um, Yeah, and B Phil says, you know, I'm always big picture. I want to know if our offense is fixed. The offense has to be better. And and I and and honestly, the offense has to be better because, you know, not to sound too much like Mike Tomlin here. And, and James, thank you for becoming a member. I uh, appreciate that. Um the offense needs to be better because it, it, it gives the Steelers a better chance to, to to compete. It gives the Steelers a better chance to win. Um yeah, it's uh, <laughs> Randy was in our Steelers feed, by the way. <laughs> I'll get to that in a second. Um, but uh, I just I, I, I that, that's a question I have, you know, because, you know, we're, we're three. We're less than three weeks away from the draft now. We've seen what they've done in free agency. Now, they're not done in free agency. They're not done possibly in the trade market either. There, there are going to be moves that are made prior to the draft. Now, are they going to be gigantic moves? Probably not, but I don't want to rule anything out. But there will be moves made. They ha- they still have more holes to fill on the roster. Um, But the draft will be the next thing to me in which I'm like continuing to gauge that urgency and how they handle this draft. When when the, all the picks are made, what does that draft class look like? How does it set this franchise up to be better, not only in 2024, but in 25 and 26 and 27? Um, I, I just it, It's a question I'm going to continue to ask, and I, I wanted to pose it today because I look at everything that's taken place so far, and I just think to myself, I'm like, man, I really feel like this season has to end with at least a playoff win. Like that's the way as we sit right now, April 5th, 2024, I feel like this, this upcoming season in order for this season to be anything less than like, if it's, if it's anything less than one playoff win, I feel like it's a failure. Even if they were to go 14 and three and finish with the number one seed in the AFC, if they were to then go to the divisional round and lose. I almost still feel like it's a it's a, it's a failure of a season. Now 14 and 3 is you go 14 and 3 in the AFC. <laughs> That's still a little something. But it almost feels, you know, it kind of feels like that 2017 season when they when they lost to Jacksonville. Cuz that was a team that was I've said it before and I'll say it again. Ryan Shazier doesn't go down with an injury. That team is competing like that team is competing for a Super Bowl. I don't know if they actually get there but it was good enough to get there. Like it absolutely was. And that team, even without Ryan Shazier was good enough to at least get to the conference championship. They just obviously fumbled in the divisional round. So, um, I just, it's a, it's a question I'm going to continue to pose. Uh, I'll put it that way. All right, let's move on. Because we're already almost at two thirty, and you know we started late. I get that. Um, we had uh, Demond with a contribution. Get to him. Uh, Ninety nine. Thank you uh, so much, Demond. Appreciate it. Uh, he says, I- "I'm curious to know your thoughts on, on Mike Sandler still." Um, um, I-, I don't even know if I say that name right. Um, he looks to me like Mike Hilton two point oh. I think he'd be a perfect slot corner in the third round if available. Ike Taylor loves him. Great show. Appreciate it, Demond. Um, yeah, I mean, if you can get him in the third round, I just don't know if that's a guarantee. Um, shoot, man, I got to pull up the, the, uh, this is my old computer. So I got to pull it up now. Um, I, and funny story on my old computer, the S, the W and the two keys do not work. Every other key works, but they don't work. I don't know why. 
Um, let me pull up the big board here to see where he's put. But from everything that I've been looking at, I don't feel like he is like third round type. I'm thinking more second round with him. Yeah, he's 36th overall on PFF's big board. I would very I, that that's not like the holy bible when it comes to big boards, but it's one that I trust when it comes to at least gauging. I would be shocked if he's there like I was 81 that the Steelers are picking. Some somewhere low 80s. I don't remember the exact number, but I don't know if he's there in the third round. If you if he's there, you run to the podium. <laughs> Whoever's making that third round pick, you you give them the card and you test their 40 time on the way there. Um let's see. Uh Randy says Christopher, thank you for tipping off Omar Khan on our dream for second picks. Uh Fuaga and Frazier seems like it'd be an awesome one-two punch. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, I I I did a I was I I, I I will be doing a mock draft soon. Like I, I will be. And so uh, I, I did a, I did a quick like first two rounds. I, it was an exercise that I wanted to see. Uh, like, is this something that could realistically happen for the Steelers? Now, granted it's a mock draft simulator. Doesn't matter how good the mock draft simulator is. It, it cannot compensate for the actual Intel that all 32 teams have on each other. Um, for where they might be targeting certain players, which players they like, which players they don't like. But I wanted to see if there was a pathway. And so what I did was I traded up. I traded the the, the third rounder uh, from the Kenny Pickett trade. So the second third rounder that the Steelers have right now. And I traded up from 20 to 15 to get Fuaga. And then in the second round, I'm watching the picks go by. I'm, you know, watching and I'm, we start getting, I started getting, I think I got to like 40 or 41 and I like pause and I made a trade offer and it didn't go through. And then I made, you know, made another trade offer a couple of picks later and it didn't go through, you know, with what I was willing to part with to, to try to get, you know, I'm playing GM at that point to try to get Zach Frazier because I don't think he's going to last to 51. And so at 44, I traded, um, obviously traded up. Uh, I included Dan Moore in the trade. Um, so, you know, I, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, Steelers got Fuaga. You don't need Dan Moore anymore. Um, you can always, I mean, Dylan Cook could be a swing tackle. If you're not comfortable with Dylan Cook, you could sign somebody else in free agency who could be a swing tackle. Um, Fua, you know, I'm like, you got Fuaga and Broderick Jones. Um, I was willing to, I was willing to, to give up Dan Moore to trade up seven spots to get Zach Frazier. So I did it. Um, I, I initially tried to not trade Dan Moore. I tried to trade the, the fourth rounder uh, to see if I could do that. But I, I I wanted to try to see if I could hold on to all the picks because Dan Moore's got one year left on his contract. I'm like, I would rather hold on to picks than, and, and trade away Dan Moore. Uh, and Stephen A says here, um, Spencer Anderson can be your swing. Yes, yeah, St Spencer Anderson, that's that's another guy. He's versatile. He can play any position on the offensive line. Um, so, Yeah. Spice Creation says, give up Leal. He doesn't play. That's true. I mean, you could, but Leal doesn't really have much. I, I like, I could probably try to run that mock draft simulator again, get to 44 and try to trade up seven spots and include DeMarvin Leal. I would almost, I would bet strongly that that trade doesn't go through, at least according to PFS mock draft simulator. Now, granted, again, mock draft simulators are not perfect. Yeah. I, yeah, if you could trade away players that you don't you're not going to use to get better assets, then phenomenal. But that typically isn't real life. Um, yeah, L let me trade all of our bad players for your good players. Like it's that it's kind of it kind of falls in line with that. Like it it just doesn't work. Um, Dan Moore at least has some value. He's started games for multiple seasons. Uh, he's proven to be at least a guy who can be you know, a left tackle for you know, a stretch of games. He might not be your number one choice, but he can still be a guy that you can put in there and play. Uh, DeMarvin Leal literally can't even stay on the field whenever Cam Hayward goes down and isn't playing. Larry Ogunjobi can't play because he's healthy and needs and needs to have his snaps limited. Like he, he can't find a way to crack into the, in, into the rotation there. Um, 
Hey, 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 and you know, Spice, you know, comes back and says, I don't think Legal is better, just doesn't fit our defense. I, 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 I kind of disagree because to me, he would seem like the perfect three technique to, to play when the Steelers are in their base defense and he can't, he hasn't proven to be able to do that. Now I understand that they also used him like the Steelers had to scramble last year when TJ Watt was injured, like in, in 2022 when TJ Watt was injured and they had to figure out a number of different ways. Like Malik Reed was one guy to help fill in. DeMarvin Leal was another guy who helped fill in. And DeMarvin Leal is absolutely playing out of position when he's playing on the edge in the same spot TJ Watt plays. That is way outside, like way on the edge. Like that's not DeMarvin Leal's strength. Uh, he probably serves better as a, as a two or three tech. And, and, and that, that's, that to me should fit what, what he's able to do. And it just, it hasn't, it hasn't worked out. Um, so I, not necessarily a guy that can play no matter what the package is. Obviously I would prefer like in a real world, like I would like to see by season's end, Cam Hayward and Keon and Benton be the two primary interior defenders up front because both of those guys can play multiple techniques. Um, and, and I really feel like that, that would be the strongest way to go because you have got you, because both guys can play a little closer to the, closer to the inside. Keon Benton obviously has, um, has experience playing a zero right over the center. Um, but he's also versatile enough where he can line up outside the guard and be able to make plays and, and, and either put pressure on the quarterback or, or eat up space. Like he has that ability. And so DeMarvin Leal doesn't fit that, but DeMarvin Leal could be the defense the, the, in a th- base three, four defense, the traditional three, you know, the traditional defensive end in that three, four defense. When you have a nose tackle lined up inside, and William here brings it up, brings it up here. What about Adams? Like Montrevious Adams would be uh, like a to me. If Keanu Benton is going to be more of your versatile guy, like a guy who can line up as a nose, a guy who can line up as as a three tech or anything like that, Montrevious Adams is a guy I want to see more out of Montrevious Adams because what I saw last year and what a lot of people saw last year is really intriguing because he was playing really good before he got injured and he would be more your nose. Like he'd be, he'd be like more your traditional zero lining up right up over the center nose tackle. Um, Keanu Benton can do it too. Um, and, and a couple of guys asking about Tavondre sweat, you know, in, in the, in the draft, the, the, the big, and this is my big concession when it comes to, when it comes to defensive line and when it comes to addressing defensive line in this draft in particular is, it's a really good draft for tackles. It's a really good draft for receivers. And it's also a pretty strong draft for cornerback. I would argue that all three of those positions are bigger needs than defensive line is. Do I feel great about where defensive line is right now? No, I don't. I've got questions about Cam Hayward's durability just because his age He's coming off a season in which he played a one leg the entire time. It's natural to have reservations about, is this dude going to be able to play 17 games this year? Is he able to play 14 games this year? And if he plays 14 games, are those like 14 games of like, that's the Cam Hayward we all know? If that's the case, then I have no re- I have no concerns. Because that Cam Hayward with Keanu Benton, what I think he's going to do in year two, I love that. Then Larry Ogunjobi in the mix, Montrevious Adams in the mix. I feel a lot better about that. But I do have some concerns over Cam Hayward just because it's not because of when Cam Hayward's healthy, I still think the dude can play. The dude is like he's he's gonna go down as one of the one of the greatest stealers of all time. And it's just because like like the dude has just been he's been one of the most overlooked players in this century. Like since since the like in the 21st century, he's probably one of the most overlooked players in the NFL, and he shouldn't be. And he got like proper recognition. Like he should have won Walter Payton Man of the Year before this year. Like let's be realistic here. Um, he should have won it. He was he's been overlooked before. So I have nothing again. It's about it's all about Cam Hayward going into 2024 
knowing the context of what happened last year. And if if everything's healthy and he's back to being Cam, my concerns go away there. And there's a possibility that that happens. But right now, Nate Herbig is the starting ta- starting center. You've got a tackle spot you really do need to upgrade. You have no slot cornerback, and I, you know, like some, some, you know, a couple guys have brought up, you know, San Bastille and and there are other options to address slot cornerback. But right now, you have not, you don't, you don't have one. Like there are other, you have no wide receiver too, like no legitimate wide receiver too. Like there are other actual holes on the roster that need to be addressed, and if those aren't properly addressed via free agency or trade prior to the draft, then those are more important to me than defensive line. Even if Tavondre Sweat is there at fifty-one. If Roman Wilson's still there at 51, and it's between Tavondre Sweat or Roman Wilson, it's not even close. That's an easy, easy choice to me. <laughs> Pittsburgh Hornets. It was Cam's pass rush win rate that prevented him from winning Walter Payton Award. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I'm sorry, I had to take a drink. I've gone 30 minutes without... Taking a, taking a breath. This is what I'm talking about. That's why I like having Corey here. Voice is breaking. I got no saliva left in my mouth. Like, it's hard to talk for 30 minutes nonstop. <laughs> I got a few more minutes, and then I do have to go pick up my kids from school. Um, but, yeah, you guys, dude, you guys are all, I, I, I really, I say it all the time, but I'm not blowing smoke. You guys are seriously the best, like, for real. You guys are just laughing. You're laughing your tails off. I almost said a bad word on here. <laughs> oh, Rick. Z- xylitol. Xylitol mints invest. Oh. I'm going to have to put that one in my notes. <laughs> you guys are funny. I love you guys. Um, yeah. So j- just, just looking at the draft in general, I, I just defensive line isn't um, defensive line. Isn't uh, it's not something that I think I'm not saying that if, 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 if one is chosen in the, in the second round or, or third round or anything like that, that it's a waste of a pick. If it's a dude, like if they get to Vondre sweat, probably don't be mad about the pick. I would only be mad about the pick. Like from a fan's perspective, like if, if if you're a fan, I would only be mad about the pick if there was a better player at a position that was a, that had a greater need, and it was like still sitting there. That that's what that would like as somebody who analyzes the team. That would make me question the pick if. Zach Frazier's gone and all the centers that you want are gone. All the tackles that you would want are gone. All the corners that you would want are gone. And Tavondre sweat sitting there receivers that you might want at that point are gone. All right. I could see that. I'd be on board with that. But, and, and, and listen, I I've like, I have like, like drove this home. You don't draft for need. You should not draft for need. Um, but, there's a way to balance both. There's a way to balance best player available and need. You have a, a a group of positions that you need to address on your roster, that you need to upgrade on your roster. For example, if the best player available at 51 is a running back, probably not the best choice of a draft pick there because they got Najee Harris, they got Jalen Warren, they got them for at least another, another couple of seasons. Um, Oh, would Jalen Warren actually be done after this year? I think. Uh, yeah, I think Jalen Warren have to be extended. Now that I think about it, because he was undrafted, so he would have a three-year contract. So he's going in his third year. So yeah, they would actually have to, you know, take it. But at least Najee Harris, he could pick up his fifth-year option, have him for another two years. Um, and see that, and William, William brings up a point here. It's like, what if there's a really good quarterback there? Like if they get to twenty, and for whatever reason, I don't think it's happening. But JJ McCarthy's still there. Dude had a really good pro day. Phenomenal pro day. It's 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 a like I don't think the Steelers do that because I think they're they're committed to 
either one of Russell Wilson or Justin Fields beyond 2024. That's what I think. I think they're committed to, I think they think one of those two guys is going to be the guy beyond this upcoming season. So I don't think they would take a quarterback at 20, even if it's like one of the top guys, for whatever reason, if he were to drop and drop, if he had a couple of bad interviews. And so the teams that were initially interested in him are not interested in him. And I, I just, I don't, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think, and, and Stephen A probably makes the right point here. If JJ is there at 20, then trade down immediately. Someone below would pay massively. I, I would probably, that would be more my reaction would be if something went terribly wrong and JJ McCarthy still there at 20, I would take advantage of the capital that somebody's willing to move up to get him. That's not happening. I can tell you right now, JJ McCarthy's not going to be there at 20. I'm just throwing in a really crazy hypothetical. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and there, are, there are some people that think JJ McCarthy is going to be a bust, but his draft stock is skyrocketing right now. And he did himself a lot of favors by having a phenomenal pro day. I mean, I, I think of all the quarterbacks that have had their pro day so far, I think he's probably had the best one in terms of like reviews and buzz and everything like that coming out of that pro day. If not like the best one, one of the best for sure. And I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing with Cody here. I think he's going top five. I do. I think he'll be gone in the top five. Whether I think that should be the should be the the, the choice or not, that's my own personal opinions. Might might be different. I'm just saying what I think is going to happen based off of everything that I've been hearing. That is my alarm. I got to run. So, uh, you guys, thank you so much. Sorry uh, again that we were late. I think we've got the right formula when it comes to the setup with the camera, with the microphone, with the computer. Um, I will try to not nearly pull my computer out of the wall next time. Um, yeah. So appreciate you guys. It's been a good week. Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, Buckos. I think their home opener begins in about like a little, a little less than 30 minutes. First pitch scheduled for four twelve four one two. Um, uh, Corey should be back Monday. I believe, I think that's what, what we were saying, what we're, I can't remember. I think he's going to be back Monday. I think either way I should be here. Might be a little bit late because you know, there, there might be, you know, a certain, um, satellite blocking our sun or, uh, you know, around that time. So we might be a little bit late. Um, but, uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in all week. Have a great weekend. Um, We'll try to actually be on time, you know, post solar eclipse. We'll try to be on time uh, <laughs> from here on out. So uh, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Much love. Catch you guys on the flippity flip. Peace.